This is Paul Thomas, Senior Editor of Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Magazine at Interfex 2010, and I'm talking today with Kerry Kahn, who is the President and CEO of Sensorin. Kerry, welcome. Thanks for being with us today. Oh, thank you, Paul. It's good to see you again. Yeah, same here. Uh, Kerry, we talked a year ago at Interfex, yep. and at the time you were um, talking with people about a new self-calibrating pH sensor. Yes. Um, you're here again this year. You still don't have the sensor on the market. What's going on with that product? Well, it's been a very exciting year. Our company was started two and a half years ago um, on a hypothesis, and in that time we've proved the hypothesis, have had a patent issued, and um, we'll have product on the market in Q4 of this year. And interestingly, um, the when we spoke last year, I had um, a prototype of a fixed in place sensor which had the same form factor as a glass electrode and during the past year we've been developing um, a sensor for the single use bioreactor market that has a very uh, low aspect it's about a six millimeter thickness so it'll be good for all types of single use bioreactors um, in that time I guess when we spoke last year we had maybe three full-time employees um, where we have uh, eight people now and uh, some people who are part-time um, we our chief t- uh, technology officer has joined us from Genentech and joined us uh, last February full-time and we have two chemical engineers um, we have uh, the capability of doing uh biopharmaceutical manufacturing mock-up and a two-liter fermenter in our lab, and we're in the process of uh, testing our probes very rigorously. So you, you've got a lot of things going on in yes. terms of ramping up and getting ready to take products to the market. Yes. What what has what has kind of held you back, if anything, and what what are sort of your next steps? What should people expect in terms of um, when you're... You, you mentioned sure. this fall the product is going to be on the market, and then yes. what other things are going to happen? Sure. Well, in terms of, um, you know, bringing a it's a totally new platform technology that we've developed. It's an amperometric pH sensor. So um, it's not so much, I think, being held up as um, developing the technology um, because we've actually started you know, totally from scratch with no academic publications before us. So we've actually worked very swiftly in terms of getting a novel product to market. Um, and, so, um, and as I mentioned before, this is an analytical tool. It has to be extremely robust. We can't come to market with anything that's not you know, as good as a glass electrode and we want something that's better. Um, but the platform the uh, platform technology that we've developed can measure multiple analytes. So we've selected pH as the first analyte because it's most needed by the biopharmaceutical manufacturing industry to promote um, drug efficacy and product stability. And it's a, it's a really key component for process analytic technology that the FDA is trying to implement in biologics manufacturing because um, currently you do not have a stable inline sensor that doesn't drift. So you never really really know what's going on inside the fermentation tank. And um, with our tool, you are going to be able to know 24-7 what is going on. And then we can use this uh, platform technology, uh, once we've solved the pH problem, to develop sensors for other analytes going forward that we um, know will be very helpful in um, biopharmaceutical manufacturing. You know, one, of, one of the things that's held PAT back in, in biopharma is the, the lack of adequate technologies, yes. adequate, adequate monitoring technologies. So yes. obviously you're, you're addressing that and you're filling a void that's out there. Yes. There's also a lot of other companies now that are, that are kind of getting into this area. How do you see how do you see yourselves um, fitting into that space and growing? Um, yeah, you know that's a very interesting question, and maybe you can give me the answer because I don't know any other companies that have a continuously self-calibrating solid-state sensor. Mm-hmm. So I'm aware of optical technologies, mm-hmm. which have limited pH ranges, mm-hmm. have quenching, um, and can't be autoclave. So our product is stable to both autoclave and gamma irradiation, mm-hmm. and is and, and doesn't require a calibration. So it's internally referenced. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm just not aware of any other products that fit the bill for pH. Yeah, maybe, maybe not specifically for pH. Yeah, for pH. That's and pH yeah. is the is the, yeah. the the reason we started the company. Interestingly, was because the need expressed by Genentech and Amgen by the industries, um, because pH, although it's been around for a measurement that's been made for 75 years, and the Beckman glass electrode is a wonderful tool for an acute measurement, it's not good over long term because of the drift, and nobody's been able to solve that problem. So give me uh, give me sort of the the prototypical application in the industry. What what would a what would a biopharma company use this sensor? Sure, for? sure. So every time w- when you grow cells and the cells are what are spitting out the drug, the biopharmaceutical, mm-hmm. the Avastin, the Herceptin, the Ethro, e- EPO, whatever it is, 
um, the cells must be uh, kept at a uh, the same pH, just like the inside of your body needs to sure. be at the same pH. If the cells aren't, drug product isn't the same. So when, what you do is um, when you have a, a stainless steel fermenter, you insert a pH probe, you steam in place with the probe in place, and then you inject the cells in the sterile environment. Um, when you sterilize a glass electrode, that oftentimes uh, uncalibrates the pH probe. So the pH probe must be calibrated prior to putting it into this stainless steel fermenter. Um, and just because of the nature of how the pH measurement is made and the glass fret membrane, that's changed by autoclaving. So frequently in GMP manufacturing, two probes are used. One is a backup probe. In addition to that, grab samples are taken from the fermenter and brought over to an ANOVA pH monitor. And um, once you remove the, uh, the uh, cell fluid from the fermenter and, and leave it in the open air, the pH is going to start to change. And you have to then take the pH within 10 minutes to get an accurate reading. And then you have to go back and recalibrate and reset. So our probe is going to take all of that operator interface out of the, of the situation. Mm -hmm. And my, my last question will be kind of looking uh, a couple years into the future. Yes. I know one of the things that your company is investigating is um, single-use technologies yes. and how you're going to use and expand those technologies. Yes. Where do you see yourselves three or four years down the road in terms of the types of products and what, what right. you're going to be helping the industry with? Well, a pH is the most needed analyte to be measured because that need is not met. But we would hope to make other measure other analytes that currently can be measured by other techniques but incorporate them into one sensor so you don't have to have multiple ports with multiple multiple operators and multiple calibrations. So that would be our goal for the future. And really an, an unlimited number of analytes in a, in a sensor? Um, well, currently, you know, you're measuring oxygen, glucose, um, cell count. You know, there are a lot of temperature, yeah, conductivity. conductivity. So these things can be incorporated. Mm -hmm. um, but you know we're we're a small, a relatively small company right now, so we want to do the first thing well. You know, yeah. establish a commercial beachhead and then move on from there. How many people right now? Just to so we're eight people full time, and we have some part time people as well. Great, Carrie Kahn of Sensor, and thanks so much. Thank for you being so with much. Us today. Appreciate Bye -bye. it.